Well, Mother, looks like a good day to make some beans. Welcome back. You know, I've always loved Saturdays, especially Saturday mornings. On a day like today, I'd grab my shovel and I'd go out around the neighborhood and I'd make 50, 50 cents a pop for every driveway that I shoveled. Or maybe I'd take the shovel with all my buddies and we'd go down to the local mill pond and shovel it off and would uh, play, a, play a game of hockey. So it was always fun. I always enjoyed it. Maybe we'd go skiing up in the White Mountains and come home. But one of the big things I always looked forward to was a pot of beans at the end of the day. It was fantastic. Boston baked beans, they're commonly called. We don't call them Boston baked beans, they're just baked beans. But I want to show you how we put them together. It's one of the simplest things that you can make. It's, you know, when I was growing up, a bag of beans was only 25 cents and uh, for a pound of beans, and it went, it went a long ways. You know, we had, we had dinner that night, maybe with hot dogs or so, some smoked sausage or kielbasa, maybe some ham. And the next morning, they were even better reheated and we'd have them with, with uh, eggs and bacon. It was fantastic. So let's step over to the counter here and I'll show you how to make some Boston baked beans. Now making baked beans in New England is a tradition that goes back to uh, colonial days. You know, sailors would bring back molasses from the Caribbean and uh, we, had, we had plenty of uh, salt pork left over and onions and uh, brown sugar was another commodity that was brought back from the Caribbean. So all these things uh, made for a good, a good meal and it was uh, cheap and easy to make, even, uh, even if it was an open hearth. So all we have here is some uh, molasses. You gotta have some good molasses. I like, we always like grandma's molasses. It was always good. That's just the right combination of tartness and sweetness. You can use either light brown sugar or uh, dark brown, it doesn't make any difference. It's gonna be pretty dark anyway with the molasses in it. And um, we've got a fist size onion there, Coleman's dry mustard and uh, some salt. We got some salt pork, and unfortunately, I don't know why they do this. They predetermine what we're supposed to be doing with this salt pork, but it's it's so common now. When you get the salt pork, it comes all sliced up. That's it's, 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 it's to me, it's a sacrilege because we don't use we have no use whatsoever for salt pork like that. Normally, we get a we get a square of salt pork about uh, four inches square, you know, a good three quarters of a pound or so, half pound, and we score it from from the fat side down. We score it about every three quarters of an inch in both directions down to the, you don't cut through the rind. You just leave it, you just leave it scored. And that will go down on top of the beans before you're done. So what we've got in here, and I'm gonna post the uh, recipe, but uh, we're gonna take this onion, we're gonna coarsely chop it up, and uh, we'll have a half a cup of grandma's dark molasses. We've got six tablespoons of uh, brown sugar, that's six tablespoons, each one of them is packed. That's the way you always measure brown sugar. I've got one pound of dried, uh, these, are, these are pea beans, they can be soldier beans or navy beans, they're all pretty much the same. If you're gonna, you can use also uh, yellow eye beans, <clears throat> yellow eye beans or kidney beans, uh, anything like that, but they're gonna take a lot longer to cook and I'd raise the temperature too, I'll talk about that. And um, you need to have a bean pot. Now, if these, these have gotten expensive. We've had this bean pot now since we've been married over 50 years, and uh, that's, that's seen an awful lot of uh, service over the years. And uh, like a lot of New England kitchens, we've got, we've, got three, we've got three more. In fact, I think we've given away three over the years. But that way there, you know, you, you can fill up your oven with these if you want to have a gang over, and you can make, uh, you can make several pots of beans. So that's about it. We're going to put it all together. The first thing we need to do is parboil these beans. Now, what these beans have been sitting in, sitting in water overnight, and um, that helps soften them up. You, you know, they're, they're like rocks. And uh, speaking of rocks, the very first thing that you do the night before is uh, you, you go through those beans and uh, make sure you, you pick out any, there could be stones in years ago, years ago it was more common to find a pebble or two and you don't, you don't see that quite so often anymore. I guess their automation probably uh, finds it. But um, 
have those have those ready in the morning we're going to throw those into a pot and bring them to a boil and we're going to boil them for about 20 minutes or so as you can see we've got them in a pot of water and we're going to be bringing these up to a boil that soaking overnight has uh, allowed some of these husks to start loosening up and and uh, they're already softening up quite a bit so we'll let that boil and once it comes to a boil we'll give it 20 minutes now when it starts frothing up like this and boiling hard turn the turn the temperature down all you want to do is uh, just gently simmer them for 20 minutes Now when these are finished parboiling, you can take them out and blow on them and you'll see the husks come up. See how that, see how that works. The husk, when they, when the husks fly off, they're done. Turn the heat off. Now it's most important to reserve this liquid because you're going to replenish the pot throughout the day about every 90 minutes or so check the pot take the lid off you don't want to cover them tightly but take the lid off and uh, if they start to dry up add, add some of that reserve liquid now today we're making traditional Boston baked beans with just the uh, grandma's molasses but uh, some people substitute maple syrup and uh, Sometimes the entire, the entire amount of uh, molasses is substituted with maple syrup, or maybe they divide it into a proportion that they found that they like. But um, this is the uh, maple syrup that I gathered last year from uh, trees on our property and uh, boiled down. So we've got some grade A medium amber, but we're not, we're not going to be adding that today. And um, I had to, uh, <laughs> I had to, truss up this pork which was so ridiculously uh, sliced into uh, you know if, if we're going to slice it we'll slice our own thank you very much uh, I don't like to have my salt pork prepared, prepared ahead of me so now um, I've got two teaspoons of Coleman's dry mustard and um, one teaspoon of salt I've got my half cup of uh, grandma's molasses other brands of molasses would do too we've used uh, rare rabbit uh, but like I say that to, to me that has just the right tanginess we've got um, six packed tablespoons of uh, brown sugar light or dark is fine and I've got that fist size onion all chopped up coarsely and uh, it's all going to pretty much disappear uh, during the during the baking process so that's it. Now we're going to add our beans, and as I said, we're not going to uh, we're not going to uh, discard that liquid. So we'll use a uh, strainer and get them out. Put in the beans. Some people like to even throw in a. Uh, chunk of Macintosh apple in there. There's a lot of things that people do to have their own versions. Macintosh apples are a New England favorite. They go back to colonial times too. There's a lot of wild Macintosh apples growing in the woods where uh, they were once farms. Now we add the uh, <clears throat> brown sugar, salt and mustard, pour in the molasses. If you pour in the molasses uh, at this time, it'll help break things down and then you put the liquid in on top of that.
It's a good idea to have the molasses warmed up if you have it in a cold pantry because there's nothing worse than pouring slow cold molasses. Now just uh, cover the beans by about an inch or so. Leave room for your salt pork. And uh, if you've got the correct style of salt pork, you just put it in rind side up. And we're ready to go. Put the lid on. Like I say, that we got that we got that crock when we were first married. That's uh, one of the most important things to have if you're a New Englander. Okay, we've got our oven preheated to 275, and there they go. Now we don't want to waste any of this fine molasses, so we'll take some of this hot liquid and that'll be our first, that'll be the first liquid that we add to that pot when it comes time. So that's all there is to making baked beans, Boston baked beans. We'll give those about six hours or so and uh, toward the end of six hours they'll be nice and tender and ready to serve for dinner time. So thanks for watching and for all my Patreon donors, thank you so much for your help and your support. And be sure to hit the like button right now and the subscribe button and the bell so you know where I'm around. So take care. Benny says hi. He's, uh, he's just lounging around on this uh, snowy day. We're getting, a, we're getting a bonafide blizzard today that's going through New England. So God bless.